Also same song band like too. All right, readability. We're going to talk about how color affects readability. It's very common for black text on a white background, and then sometimes you have the complete opposite. But I don't know if this works here, but on a monitor of or your screen, the bright color, the bright light is overwhelming the text, so it makes it look a little thinner. And then when you have the text, the white text on a black background, that light is going to overwhelm the background and make it look thinner. So this will look thinner, sorry, this will look thinner, and that will look more bold. And if you're trying to match, you might want to go with a semi-bold over here <coughs> and a regular typeface over there. So I've dimmed the color a little bit, so the contrast isn't so much, so now they're a little closer. Closer in weight. All right, so we're looking at your main content window, and you have some text, and I know a lot of themes are pretty wide, but that is really long to read. Also, too, the type is a little too small. So text is too small. We want to keep it, I'd say, at 18 pixels. Uh, set it there so it's easier to read. And then we need to talk about the line length. It is long. You don't want to be reading your line and then take a breath and you come all the way back and then you're, where did I start again? <laughs> this is how newspapers are easy to scan. Well, print newspapers. Columns are so narrow that you can really read that story very quickly. So we'll make that narrower and it'll make it easier to read. But the line height is too tight. You want to give it, again, some breathing room. So we'll spread it out. And now we've added a title, Hello World. So this text is all in black, but we want it to be a little softer, but still easy to read. Yes? Is the title the same font as the body? Yes, uh, but it is bold. It is bold, but I, I was just noticing how close the words are. It's like the letting between them would be better off, a greater letting. So you've got more space between the word. At least in the title, if the text was okay, but in the title, sometimes it looks like they're on the <coughs> And if that... I just noticed that. I just yeah, noticed. and that's where you can adjust the letter space. Letting is the term used for letter spacing. Letter spacing is CSS, that's what you call out. So you can expand the space between the letters. And letting is the same thing in graphic design terms. Yes? Uh, is there a recommended length of your lines? I think it's 72 characters, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, <coughs> for gen generally. Generally, yeah. I think general term, because each font is different, so its width and its height and also its letting will be different. So you'll have to, one rule doesn't work for all, so you have to adjust. <clears throat> so now I'm going to adjust the color. Now, do you notice anything different? Does it, does it look okay? Does the color look okay? Yes, no. <laughs> no. No. All right, well, on this projector it is hard to read, but I want to talk about their different colors. I want the header, because it's bold and big, it's throwing more color, so it's going to look darker than the text. So I use a lighter color in the header to match the text down below. Now you can adjust this, this is just a slide here. But if I make it the same color, you see the difference? That's the exact same color, but it feels a little darker than the text. Back and forth. Any questions about this? OK, we'll move on. Now we'll go on to details. Now we went wide, and now we're going to just little tweaks that will help your web design. So what we have here is another hero image with a header and a call to action. As you can see, it's a little hard to read because in the design, they didn't think about 
what kind of photo is going to go behind the text. Well, it works great if you have maybe something monochromatic or dark or shaded. This is something to consider, too. If you are creating uh, photos to go in a website, it might just be easier to go into Photoshop or your preferred image editor and make it uh, all one color, maybe a dual tone, darken it down. You also do this in CSS as well. If you're just throwing up images there, then you can guarantee that they'll all look the same in CSS. So what we should do here is maybe add a drop shadow. It's a little more read readable. So we've offset it vertically and horizontally, so it's at a 45 degree angle. But it's still not working. Or, uh, it's uh, probably, yeah, the shadow. Yeah, the shadow is like the sun's over here, and the shadow is projecting over. And I recommend don't use black or gray for your shadows. Always use a color of some kind. Uh, you can default to a dark blue if you want, which I did here because it matches the sky. If you have maybe a green background, use a dark green uh, shadow. But still not quite readable. So now I'm going to throw a little color behind it to make it pop. And once again, I didn't use black or gray. I used a darker blue, and I gave it about 40-50% opacity. So now I can read the title, the subtitle, and the call to action button. All right. You've gone to the WordCamp website. You've gone to many web websites where they have author's heads in boxes. And the photos are taken in various different ways. They're not bad. Maybe you took a great photo of yourself at the beach, or you had a professional photo taken in a studio, but they're all together, and it doesn't quite blend, and you want it to look even. What they've already done here is they put it in a circle, which makes it a little nicer, a little more cohesive. That's why Twitter switched to circles instead of squares. But also, too, you can do this in CSS, where you take all the color photos and just make them grayscale, or give it a duotone color, blue, whatever, to match the website design. So at least now, an iPhone photo is equal to a studio photo. One thing I like about Stripe, go to stripe.com and see how they handle their information. It's vastly different from PayPal.com. They do the same thing in which they process money, but they have little things that delight you. They don't over, Stripe doesn't overwhelm you with information. They have a lot of information they have to convey because they have to, you have to, they're trying to earn your trust and they're trying to give you all the information you require. So they've thought about this and they've laid it out. There's plenty of breathing room there's nice little animations in their uh, menu at the top. But what I like with the buttons is that with CSS, it just slightly moves up. Or move up or down. Moves up. Like it's reaching for that click. Like, please click me when you hover over. <laughs> you, you know you want to use us. All right. Little layout details. You've seen this where you have little icons that you can use. Well, the problem with this here is it's not very readable. People are kind of swirling around to read the information. If you line it up like so, it makes it much more readable. And also, too, with the icons, sometimes you have just an outline of an icon. Flip it around, give it a background, put it in a circle and have that color uh, match your website. All right, with drop shadows, coming back to drop shadows. For boxes, it is better to have it at slightly off than just directly behind. Yeah, it gives it more definition, but it's a little nicer. I forgot I had a laser pointer. <laughs> Anybody got a cat? vertical off shadow and again not black not gray but with a little bit of color what color did you use on this 
I think I use gray. <laughs> <laughs> you caught me. But that's because your background's gray, so you're using the There you go. The Thank you. I'll pay you afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's review what we talked about. We talked about layout, breathing room. Don't crowd your information. Make it easier to read. If you see a website where it's comfortable to read, look at what they're doing. See how you can mimic it. I don't say directly copy, but see what they're doing. Now we talked about color. Don't rely on color just to convey information, but use it in a more delightful way, but don't overwhelm people. And don't use opposite colors like green and red. I know that's really great for Christmas, but don't have like a red background. <laughs> green tie, because it buzzes and it hurts. It gives you a headache. And we talked about type. Use good fonts. There are plenty of good fonts at Google that are for free. They're, they're being used in all sorts of templates. You can also use Typekit if you have a Creative Cloud account. And you can buy or download other fonts and use those uh, as well. And details. Take a moment to look at the details. What are other websites doing that make it a little delightful? Like, huh, I like visiting that website. Versus, ah, I can't get away fast enough. You know? And we always have to remember surprise and delight. Okay? Now keep your users and your visitors in mind. Don't use a design that you just came off the top of your head. It makes you happy. Does it make others? <coughs> the website's not for you, it's for other people, including your own personal website. Your design is for other people, not you. Okay? Thank you very much. Sped right through that. There's a link to the. Uh, I, I noticed you, you lined up the icons. Yes. Okay. What about the treatment of icons? That was something for you. What about the treatment of icons? Like there's the. Uh, icon of the icon Oh code. yeah, like font awesome? Yeah, can you put it above a box or something like that? What about the treatment of those with with shadows, with coloration, any tips or reads on how to I think if they're not enclosed in a box, enclosing them in a box or a circle is helpful. And you can use a drop shadow of that box and make it very subtle. <laughs> Don't make it too dramatic. And if you're using a drop shadow on the outline font, it will just look awful, if, if you understand. I don't know. It, it, it doesn't have a shape. It's just an outline. You can see clearly if you add a drop shadow, it just runs it. Yeah, and with icons, this is a good question. Make the icon color lighter than your text. You don't want them to see the icon first, then your text. It's to complement the type not to overpower the type. Yes, I think of it as it gives an indication for what that block is. Right. You know, it's just a, it's a gentle, hey, this is you know an alert or whatever. But you, you want them to look at the alert, not, oh, that icon. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. Um, a lot of what you talked about, uh, having more space, uh, narrower width columns, uh, these things all add to uh, more pages, more clicking. How do you minimize that? Not necessarily more pages, but maybe more scrolling. And now you have over 50% of your traffic coming from mobile, and it's just natural for people that just to use their thumb. Oh. <laughs> just to use their thumb. Flip, 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 flip. Think of Facebook. How long are people on Facebook on their phones scrolling through their news feed? <laughs> exactly. So they're going to scroll. It's good question. Thank you for bringing that up. Because a lot of people think about that. I've had that. Got to have everything above the, the scroll. I don't want people scrolling. People don't scroll. Facebook has eliminated that word. <laughs> All right. In the back. So I noticed that a lot of the designs 
culture web now have images that are horizontal focused, many resources or tips on dealing with images that are more vertically focused? Uh, I don't know if you've noticed this, but when, uh, when you watch your local news or any news program, low battery, I'll, I'll yell. <laughs> Do my best Uncle Merlin. All right. <laughs> what they do when they're showing vertical video or a video from Instagram that's square, they have to fill that extra space. And uh, I've seen ESPN just put their logo on the side, which I think looks horrid because it's red. ESPN. But what they've done is that they've faded the image and they've made it really blurry, like you're looking through Vaseline. And it's moving along with the same video, moving with it. So it fills that space and it feels uh, vertical. So you can do that pretty easily uh, in your image editor and add that to it. But sometimes you're, you're, that's your only option is a vertical. Right. Okay. Yes? What would you say is the What do you want them to do? Number one, what do you want them to do after that? Primary, secondary, tertiary. And leave the rest alone. Just, and space everything out. So if you want people to sign up for your newsletter the minute they hit your website, put that at the top. Give it a bold color. And give them a reason. It says, hey, I'm Joe, sign up. Well, what am I signing up for? Hi, I'm Joe. I'm a graphic designer. I've been working for 20 years. I primarily do sports graphics. Sign up for my newsletter. Now you know what you're getting. Yeah, I want to sign up for it. Joe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any more questions? 